Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why stress is killing you. Now, we all know this, right? Stress is one of the biggest killers in America. It creates so many different chronic diseases. But what many of us don't know is how to actually get over our stress. How do I overcome my stress and get into optimal health and happiness? So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the framework for getting out of the stress. And this framework is the five brainways. Using this five brainways framework, I'm going to explain to you how you can use this methodology and this framework to overcome your stress and to step into optimal health Health and optimal happiness. Hey guys, I'm Gabby Robledo and welcome back to Making Mindfulness Fun. Here on this channel, we help you on a journey to higher consciousness so you can experience more joy, love, and emotional liberation. So this video that I'm about to share with you that's going to come right after this first appeared in my course called Brainwave Mastery, How to Unleash Your True Potential and Overcome Your Stress. So I wanted to share this video with you guys because I believe it can truly make a difference in getting you out of your stress state. The thing is, stress might seem like a small inconvenience, but it's actually affecting you in ways you can't even imagine. Your stress creates an addiction to stress, which then prevents you from actually manifesting what you really want in your life, and it affects your actual health and your actual happiness. But the manifestation thing is huge. Dr. Joe Dispenza discusses this a lot, how we have this, first we have this negativity bias in our brain. So we are constantly replaying negative emotion or negative memories in our brains. Well, what happens is that we have this circuit that constantly uh, runs, right? And you can learn more about this in Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, um, Becoming Supernatural, which I put in the link in the description, but he discusses how we have these thoughts and these thoughts are negative typically because of, um, we just have this negativity bias in our brain as discussed in another book called The Buddha's Brain, link below. But we have these negative thoughts and those negative thoughts trigger a stress reaction in the physical body. The entire physical body, the hormones, the whole body reacts because of thoughts trigger emotion, emotions trigger um, hormones, hormones trigger a uh, response, right? And when we have these emotions, then it triggers us to think more negative thoughts. And we're stuck in this circuit of being addicted to stress. And stress is not just being like, sitting in traffic and ah, oh, you know, I'm so angry, I'm sitting in traffic. Even just scrolling through social media, all the different ways that we have stimulants through our phone are still stress. And we're gonna learn more about this in the five brainwaves because stress is all about being in beta and we're in beta our whole, our whole almost our whole day. We're not nearly in the other brainwaves enough. And so when we're in beta, we are inherently in stress, even if it doesn't feel particularly stereotypically stressful. So in this video, we're gonna I'm gonna start by breaking down what the five brainwaves are and how you can use these five brainwaves to get out of your stress state, um, get into your flow state, and start to manifest the life you want easier. Also, if you're interested in learning more about how to actually get out of stress, I recommend that you click the link below and you check out my Get Out of Beta workbook and meditation that go along with this multi-part video series that I'm about to share with you. These video series will give you everything you need to know about how to get out of your stress state, but if you want to actually get the meditation that I've used um, for months and months and months to get out of my stress state and to get into my alpha state, my creativity state, my flow state, you can click the link below and get the workbook and the meditation to start implementing implementing these get out of beta uh, strategies that I'm, a, I'm about to share with you. Welcome to lesson one. So the first thing we're gonna be talking about is basically just an overview of what the five brain waves are and how what brain state we enter at what parts of our day. So the first thing you should know is that one, there are five brain waves. And two is that our brain waves can't jump from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency. Everything flows. So if we wanted to move between the second and the third brain wave and the fourth brain wave, it would move fluidly as a transition like that. It's not like you can just jump to the next one. And it doesn't really matter, only that when we go in to talk about the second, third, and fourth, we can't just jump straight from the fourth to the second. So the next thing is that um, these brainwave mastery practices aren't necessarily an instant relief type thing. Now granted, sometimes I do these practices and I just instantly feel more relaxed and better. Um, but what we're really trying to do is that the brain has this thing called plasticity, which means that the brain can be slowly molded over time and be developed into basically a better framework for happiness. So what we're trying to do with brainwave mastery is actually kind of morph our brain to set ourselves up for more positive life experiences in the in the long term. We're kind of trying to morph our brain. And I know that sounds like, ooh, 
that's kind of freaky. I don't want to morph my brain. But essentially, you're trying to set yourself up for balance in all five brain waves, which, as we talked about before, is how you experience a more fulfilling life. Um, another fun fact about brain waves before we get started is that in the yoga tradition, now in, in yoga tradition when it was first um, I don't know, being developed, yoga is so old you can't even say it was being developed. Yoga was, they didn't even have, they didn't have neuroscience back then, but all the aspects of yoga were actually designed intuitively um, to create balance in all five of your brain waves through yoga, meditation, chanting, all the aspects of yoga philosophy created balance in all five of the brain waves. And the reason for that is because our five brain waves are very um, intuitive things. You, when, when I discuss these things, you're going to think, oh, that, that makes sense. These brain waves aren't, they flow with what our natural processing is because it's our brain. We can recognize that, oh yeah, I do feel this way when my brain fires like that. And so in turn, yoga was designed, I'm sure, there was this intuitive feeling like I need to feel more relaxed. And so they would go and do these intuitive things like meditation and they'd realize that it made their brains feel more balanced, okay? So I'm gonna talk about, give you a brief overview of what the five brain waves are. And I'm gonna put a graphic on the side here so that you can get a visual at the same time um, and, a brief, and an overview so that you can kind of follow so you don't lose track of which ones are which. So the first brain wave we're gonna talk about is the slowest brain wave. It's called delta. Now this is, a, this is the only brain wave where we're not conscious at all. It is our deepest, most regenerative sleep. So it's sleep where you don't dream at all. And we're actually not gonna be talking about this, um, this brain wave that much in this course because what we're gonna try to do actually is to affect the other brain waves in order, because Delta Delta's healthy, okay? When you're a healthy person and you eat right and you exercise and you don't and you don't live too much in beta as we'll talk about later, then you should experience Delta because Delta is your deepest sleep. And I know a lot of stressed people, they don't actually experience this deep sense of this deep sleep. And that has a lot to do with beta as we're gonna talk about later, but that's why we're not gonna touch much on uh, Delta because there's not something that you can just do to be like, okay, enter Delta. Okay, Delta has to do with how you affect your other brain waves. But what is interesting that you should know about Delta is that Delta is where you experience deep recovery on a cellular level. It's where you recover on all five layers of your koshas. And if you don't know, your koshas are your um, what yoga is considered your five layers of being. And it's your, your physical body, your energetic body, your mental body, your emotional body, and your blissful body. So all five of those aspects experience recovery when you're in your delta state. And that delta state is experienced when you have really, really deep sleep. Um, the next phase is called theta. And theta is where things get interesting because theta is both a sleeping and an awake state. It is what I, is a, it is our dream state of being. So when we are asleep and we go to bed at night, um, we're gonna go through, we're gonna slow down and just, just as we fall asleep, we enter theta before we go into delta. Theta is where we experience vivid imagery in dreams and what some would consider downloads or messages being told to you from the universe or God or whatever you believe um, where you, you're experiencing messages and signs and or just straight up dreams and nightmares even. Um, now, when we are awake on the other hand, because like I said, theta is both in sleep state and in awake state. When we're awake, theta is what I'd call semi-conscious because uh, it's where we cultivate the, the the beginning of an idea and where it's where epiphanies come to you. Now we're going to talk about later alpha is the state that comes next and that's where you those ideas come to consciousness but theta is the state where we allow things to we're in the receiving state so it's where we have our creativity it's where we experience epiphanies and it's where we have deep self-understanding it's almost like being it's almost like dreaming while without being asleep okay um we have no awareness here so theta is most commonly experienced in deep meditation. Now, a deep meditation means something at least 30 minutes long where you kind of lose your sense of self. And by awareness, I mean truly um, realizing what's around you. Because if you've ever meditated, and maybe you have experienced this, maybe you haven't, um, sometimes you get such into such a deep meditation that you don't, you no longer know what's going on around you. You even kind of lose sense of your physical body. And that's theta state. Now you can also experience theta state through some other practices like I'm going to explain. And one of the most common other ways to experience theta is right when you wake up in the morning. And when I talk about my get out of beta formula, 
Um, one of those things is going to be talking about making room in your life for theta to naturally happen in your mornings because theta naturally occurs when you wake up. So theta occurs as you fall asleep, once you initially fall asleep, and then it occurs when you wake up pretty early in the morning. And it, it can happen even if you wake up really late. But um, theta is so important because it's where creativity can come up. It's where we can receive ideas from, from the combination of our lives and um, maybe it's a spiritual aspect of the universe and God or whatever. Um, and it's where we receive this and we, we turn deep within ourselves and we uncover new aspects and we receive new insights. And then we're going to go into alpha and that's where these ideas are going to cultivate. So our alpha state, our alpha state is what I like to call our third eye state. If you know anything about chakras, the third eye chakra is right here and it's home of intuition and wisdom. And the same goes for alpha state. Our alpha state is our intuition and our wisdom and our visualization. Now, um, like theta, it's actually very similar to theta. The difference is theta was where we cultivated the ideas. It's where we received and alpha is our conscious, uh, our conscious knowing of these ideas are filling our minds. It's, um, it's a conscious Zen, so to speak. Al alpha state, the way I like to explain it is like when you're in meditation and, or any, any time in your life, when you're aware that you're having ideas. So unlike theta, where you lose your sense of self, you lose your sense of what thought is, um, and you lose sense of physical body in the outer world, in alpha state, we're still deeply relaxed, but we have this soft awareness of what's going on around us. We're not stressed out by it because that will be beta state, the next one. So we're aware and we're aware of our inner self, but we're consciously filled with these ideas. So what's great about alpha state is that it allows us to fill in the color and fill in the rest of, of a vision. Okay, that's why it's visualization. So anytime we have a creative thought or we have an idea about the life we want to live or just an idea of something we want to create, it's where we fill in the details and the color and the fine print. Not necessarily doing it, making a plan, but you have the clear vision of it. And this is really important in our lives because anytime we want to manifest something new or we want to be creative or we want to change our lives or we don't know what we want, we're trying to figure out what we want with our life, you have to be able to clearly picture it. And so if you want to be able to clearly picture it, you have to enter an alpha state. And I'm going to give you lots of ways that we can enter our alpha state. Naturally, your alpha state occurs in the evening. Um, so that's why a lot of times when... I know I experienced this, and I know a lot of other people who experience this. Right when you're going to sleep, you're filled with creative inspiration, or not necessarily creative, but like your brain is just fine, and you're on it, and you, you have all these ideas. And um, you also experience alpha naturally when you do yoga. Um, so if, if you do yoga, you know that when you get into a, a good flow, that is the ultimate alpha state that you're feeling. It's um, because you're conscious of your body, but you're, you're relaxed in a yoga class, right? And unless you're doing like hot yoga, but um, that state of being aware of the physical body, aware of your thoughts and also deeply relaxed and actually being able to kind of, to visualize things and have ideas and inspiration, being conscious of your inspiration, that is alpha state. And the only way, the way that's easiest to distinguish what alpha is and theta is, is when you are in meditation and the first five minutes in meditation, you're sitting uncomfortably, right? You're like, I'm stressed out. I'm thinking about my day. Next, after five minutes, you're in your alpha state. Alpha state is where you start to enter all of your ideas. And you're like, ooh, I, I forgot about that thing. Or or you're filled with, ooh, ooh, I really want to do this new this new idea I had. For, and you're filled with all this inspiration. And then after that, when you forget about your ideas and your brain is just quiet for a minute, that's when you're in your theta state. You lose sense of your surroundings, but in your alpha state, you do have sense and awareness of your physical body and a little bit of the external world. Welcome to the fourth state, which is called our beta state. Beta state is our alert state, and that's what this whole course is pretty much all about, in addition to gamma. So we're gonna talk about in a sec. But beta is the most important because beta is our stress state. Now granted, beta is also our alert state, like we said, so our beta state, it converses, it decides, it problem solves, it makes plans, it completes tests, it gets shit done, okay? Beta state is super important to actually achieving things, to actually making your visualizations come to life, to making your creativity happen. The problem is we spend way too much of our life in beta. We spend all, in fact, most of our day is spent in beta. 
And that's not good because then you're not having balance in all of your other aspects of your life. The thing is, beta is really important, okay? It serves a purpose. And like our solar, the beta state reflects our solar plexus chakra. Um, our solar plexus chakra is the ruler of action and motivation. And beta is the same way. It rules action and motivation. The only problem is a lot of times we are not, our solar plexus in order for it to be balanced has to be aligned with our other chakras, our sacral chakra, our heart chakra, our third chakra, and our third eye chakra. And the same goes for our beta state. It needs to be aligned with our higher desire, a higher purpose, and a place of love and compassion. The problem is that most of us, beta, it, our beta just does, 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 and does without thinking about why am I doing this thing? Or does this thing align with what I really want or what I really want to be in the world? So beta serves a purpose, but we're gonna, we're, what we're gonna talk about in this course is about getting out of beta with my out formula because we need to enter a state of alpha and theta first before beta can really serve a purpose. Because when we're in alpha and theta, we cultivate the ideas, the visualization for the life we wanna create. We tap into our other chakras through those alpha and theta states, and then beta serves a purpose. Then beta is super helpful for us. Um, so beta state, um, once again, it it's, it's our stress state. And what also happens when we're in the stress state is that it taxes our physical body. And like we talked about in our other courses, in order to truly thrive, and actually, you actually have to have a phys your physical body has to be in good health in order to enter your alpha and theta state. Because as we're going to talk about later, we have such bad gut health that it puts us in beta state. Okay, that's another topic that we're going to dive into more. But overall, beta is our stress state, and it serves a purpose. But we need to first align with our higher self and our higher purpose. And the final brain state is gamma state. This is the ultimate rapid fire of our brain's frequency. It's as fast as our brain can fire. Now, gamma state is quite possibly considered to be the reason for humans to be. Okay, that sounds dramatic, like I talked about in our welcome video, but there have been multiple studies that can that show that the happiest people on earth are the ones who experience the most gamma state. Gamma state can also be referred to as flow state. Um, when we are in our gamma state, gamma state is where we experience peak experiences, what I like to call. It's where we have peak athletic performance, peak problem solving skills, um, peak everything in life where you just feel out of the out of those out of this world ecstatic. And not just that, but gamma state is also associated with our crown chakra. And if you know anything about the crown chakra or about the chakras, our crown chakra has to do with our sense of interconnectedness, spirituality, and connection to something greater than ourselves in a way of contribution. And the same goes for gamma state. When we're in a gamma state, we experience this um, un undeniable feeling of being interconnected to everything around us. We also um, have out-of-body experiences here. And I know from personal from personal experience that, that that's very real. I've experienced that many times when I'm in my flow state. Um, it's really undeniable that um, gamma state is kind of the key to living a fulfilling life. If you want to know more of the details on how scientifically, if that is true, check out The Rise of Superman. This is an amazing book. This book inspired so much of this course for me. But in that book, it talks about all the scientific details of why um, gamma state triggers certain aspects of our brain, which makes us feel so um, fulfilled, interconnected, and just um, in contribution to everything around us. So the thing is with gamma is, so gamma is our flow state, right? We're gonna have a whole section on flow state, on the components of what makes flow state. But the problem with gamma state and why so many people don't experience gamma state is that it's really hard. In this course, I'm gonna tell you why there are ways you can just calm yourself down from beta. It's much easier to calm down than energize yourself up. And gamma goes a step beyond just energizing yourself up. When we're trying to go from beta to the lower chakras, it's partially simple in that you're just trying to calm yourself down and you're using therapeutic sound and vibrations and other practices to calm yourself down. Our bodies naturally kind of want to calm down, especially in our busy lives. But in order to pump ourselves up to get into gamma, it's really hard, especially when I'm going to talk about later. Gamma, you can't actually enter gamma from a beta state. So you can't just simply be in a moderately stressful situation and just enter gamma. You have to learn how to calm to alpha, and then once you're in alpha, you can smoothly transition into gamma. Gamma is so interesting. 
and yet so fulfilling and so difficult to enter. Gamma is the key to understanding our, our purpose, our interconnectedness with the world, and our true fulfillment. So many of us do find balance in our other four brainwaves, but we ignore the gamma state and act as if it's reserved for only the exclusive elite athletes of the world. But the truth is, all of us can experience gamma state and we should experience gamma state because when you incorporate gamma state and you find your alpha and your theta and your delta and, your, and you have alignment in your beta, that is when you'll experience true fulfillment in all aspects of your life. So I hope this gave you a good overview of what the five um, of what the five brainwaves are, how they affect your life, and I hope that set the stage for what we're gonna for the practices we're gonna dive into. And now that and so I hope you know now when I say alpha, what that means, what beta, what that means, what each thing means, so that when we dive into the more details of this later on, you won't be confused. Um, and I hope this inspired you to keep going on this journey to discover balance and unleash your true freedom.